Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Zoho's markup language, or ZML, our agenda. First, we're going to talk about what ZML is. We're going to go through a bit of the basics around the syntax, and then we're going to show you some examples as well as diving into a demo where we're going to work with ZML snippets. So ZML. ZML is Zoho's proprietary markup language. It's used to ensure nativity between the different platforms that uh, Zoho Creator can be utilized on. So whether you're on mobile or web or computer, it's ensuring that the application renders correctly across all of the different um, platforms. It's basically a front-end markup language. Think like HTML, but much more basic. Uh, and it's used within basically a grid pattern to build the different containers that are used to hold data, images, whatever it may be, across the different platforms where Zoho Creator can be utilized. So, in an earlier video, we talked about some of the panels, and we went through a lot of the click uh, sorry, point and click sort of interface of the different options. Now, everything that we have in that point and click can also be accessed from the code section. So you can see up there we have design, which is basically the point and click, and then code, which is the back end. So clicking on that pulls up the code for the panel that we're looking at. So you can see it's deals one, We've got an image, and then we've got um, a data point for a sum of all the um, deals that have been won. So as we go through this section, we're going to break down a lot of um, the pieces of this code to sort of talk about what each of this means. But it's good to show you guys exactly how you can interact with the code of a panel um, and affect the ZML as it makes a, a lot easier to replicate different panels, to replicate different structures of panels. Um, you can basically come in here, copy all of the ZML out of this, paste it into the next panel that you're looking for, and everything would match. So now that we've looked a little bit at how ZML is utilized, we're gonna go through the syntax. So each panel, as we said earlier, is a container. And within that container, you have a few different elements that have to be included. So the first is your actual panel tag. The next is your PR tag, which is designating a row within that panel. The next is a column, so the PC tag. And then last is the panel element. So if you just had one panel element, let's say a image, you would have one panel tag, you would have one PR tag, one column tag, creating a singular box within the panel. You would put in your elements, then you would close all of those. As you're building out the panels, you can increase the number of rows, increase the number of columns, you can add multiple columns in the same row, multiple rows within the same col or multiple elements within the same column. Uh, there's a lot of different sort of variations that you can use uh, to ensure that you're getting the layout that you're looking for, but all of it is done through those three types of uh, tags as well as um, the elements that are going to be included inside it. So here's a quick example of what it looks like within the platform and we're going to do a lot more in the demo as far as going through this but you can see we've got panel we've got row we've got column our element and then we're closing our column closing our row and though it's cut off we're closing our panel all right so next we're going to talk about snippets and we went through a little bit of this in the creating pages video 
um, where we talked about how the ZML snippets do a lot of the customizing uh, of the, visib the visualizations for the different panels. Um, but basically, this is what a snippet looks like. So you can see we have some ZML already in there, though it's just the panel tag. On top of that, we've got a couple um, symbols, and then below that, we've got a couple symbols. These symbols are necessary within a snippet to tell the system that it's a snippet. It's the way that we break out of ZML to put delusion so that we can have basically those two different languages running in parallel within the same container. The top set, the less than parent, uh, percentage squiggly bracket percentage greater than sign, that's opening and closing deluge. And we're putting the squiggly brackets in there as basically our container for our ZML. So the first set of um, greater than less than symbol with the percentage is opening deluge the second one is closing it we do that at the beginning we put that in zml in between we then do the open and close at the end and this is basically what's telling the system that it's a snippet so you need to include both zml and deluge in a snippet for it to be for it to work, basically, um, for it to be a snippet versus a panel. And then the opening and closing are basically just telling that system, this is where Deluge is going versus this is where ZML is going. We also wrap our variables with the same symbols, the open and close for Deluge, to ensure that it's calling the variable from our set and not just putting in text. So here's a simple example. And we'll go through this really quickly before we hop into the system. At the top, we've opened the luge. We've then commented adding the luge in a snippet. We have a variable that we set called my name, and our value is John Smith. We then close the luge. So this is all of our deluge code being entered here. Once we close the luge, we can then go into ZML. So we have our panel we have a row, we have our column, we then have an element. The text value is the variable my name, which again, the value is John Smith. We then close our column, we close our row, we close our panel, and then we open and close our deluge again at the end to ensure the system knows that it's a snippet. All right, so this is just a simple example. We're gonna go through a little bit more complex ones here in a minute uh, with the demo, and hopefully that isn't too confusing and you're following along. So here we are back with the simple example. So you can see we have our deluge up here, making our variable. We then have our ZML, panel, row, column, text value, column, row, panel, and then our deluge close here. So when we save this and we go over here and we reload the page, <clears throat> this is what we're getting. So John Smith. So you can see this is pretty plain. Um, so let's add some characteristics here uh, to our text to uh, make it look a little bit better. So why don't we first start with some color? So right here next to the text we can type in color and they go equals and then we need to use single quotations so our color is actually based off of uh, hex codes so we need to put in our six digit hex code so let's say it's 2f 9a b 5 all right now let's save let's go over here reload and now you can see that our text color has changed so let's add some more attributes I'm not gonna reload the page every time I do it but let's say that we wanted to change the size so let's say our size equals say 36 pixels say upper case equals 
false. Uh, let's just put in our bold. So bold equals true. And then we can put in type just to make sure equals text. It's not necessary, but definitely uh, helps out when we're going through um, some of these other panels. Let's do background color. And let's put in DA, 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 which is just going to give us a gray. So we've added in color, we've added in size, uppercase, bold, type, so different characteristics. There are other ones that we can add, like underline or italic, um, but they're not quite necessary. Um, they're just things that we uh, include in our basic ones. So if we hit save, we go over here and we refresh, we then get a larger size, we get some background color, um, and we get uh, some text color. So whether it's an improvement is, you know, up for debate. Uh, you know, obviously color is going to be subjective, but it definitely makes more of an impact um, than our plain sort of basic um, text did. All right. Uh, so typing all of that out is kind of annoying. Um, so we can actually save. We can close. Uh, if we wanted to grab a panel, we could. And let's say we wanted all of this information to come in. We could actually just copy all of the code for this panel. We could go back into our ZML. Let me delete this. Go back into our ZML. We could go to this panel here and we could change that. Now, obviously, we've got some information here. So let's say that the value here is my name and our value here is going to be our deluge variable for my name. So all right, let's hit save, go back here, refresh, and now you see we've got my name and John Smith. And maybe we want to switch those around, so let's just grab this. Throw it up here, and then we can make this just to my name. And now it looks a little bit better with John Smith, and then my name. All right, so now let's do a little bit more of an advanced example. So we're in our Zilker Home app. We've got these order information. Maybe we want to take uh, the names and the emails and display them here um, so that we have uh, a little bit cleaner sort of interface and it shows us uh, our customer information. So here we're going to get rid of our deluge up top because we're actually going to put it here in the middle of the text so that our ZML repeats for each one of our entries in our data. So we need to go here and let's actually change this. So let's make this customer information. We've got a closed row. We'll then put an entry in here. And for this, we're going to open up our deluge. So to get our information, we need to do a call. But since it's a list, we need to do for each. So for each customer info in order. And it's going to be ID does not equal zero. So we're basically saying for each customer info in order, which is our form, where the ID does not equal zero, we need something to happen. So we're going to leave this here. We're going to have a new row. We're going to have a new column. 
and then we're going to display let's say the name for each customer so this is then going to be our deluge open equals this will be customer info dot name then we'll close our deluge and let's make this a little bit bigger so let's say 36 and then here after our row closes we actually need to go back we need to open our deluge close our squiggly bracket and then close our deluge and we actually need to close our deluge here too I didn't do that earlier so let's do that now when we hit save we go over here and we hit refresh you can see customer information and then we get all the information for those customers or their names coming down here so let's say we wanted to add their email to it let's actually get rid of this background color it's a little a little bright oh all right so we're gray and then we're white make it white okay there we go all right so now we have our white Let's make this black okay so to add let's say we want that email to the side what we would do is we would copy our column put in the new column here we would change our name to email and then we'd hit save and refresh now we've got this here that's all well and good but there isn't a space in between the two so we can actually take our column and get rid of this and just make it a hyphen and now if we go here you can see we've got the name and then the email uh, for each of our uh, individual uh, customers all right cool so that's working with ZML uh, within snippets um, basically you know any sort of like setting that you're looking for anything that you want to do um, as far as the way that it's formatted can all be done uh, through this all right so in this video we went through ZML Zoho's markup language we talked about the syntax included within the ZML and then we went through a quick simple example in the slides as well as a live, more complex example to show you exactly how ZML can be utilized with Deluge inside snippets to get more robust data showing on your pages. Thank you for your time, and I hope you learned something.